It's January of 2023, and everything is on fire. People are abandoning 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons in droves, and no one knows where they're going to end up. If you're one of those refugees, I can't answer that for you, but I do know quite a lot about the OSR, the old school renaissance scene, which is often seen as a major alternative to Dungeons & Dragons 5e. If that's something that you're interested in, I'm going to be looking at a bunch of different rule sets here, some of my favorites from the OSR, that I think cover a number of different niches within the hobby, things that are pretty close to 5th edition, things that are further away, and hopefully you'll find something that you like if you're trying to move away from standard D&D and into something a little bit more peculiar. All of the books that I'm going to talk about today, I'm going to put links to them in the description down below. And also, if you want a lot more detail as to what's going on in these books, I have full length reviews of each of them on my channel for you to look up. All right, if you are leaving 5th edition and you want an OSR game that is relatively similar to that, probably my first uh, suggestion is going to be Worlds Without Number. So Worlds Without Number is a big, thick, chunky boy, as you can see right there. And it has everything you need to play the game. Game Master's advice and stuff for players, it's all in there. And it's similar to 5e in that I think there is a little bit more crunch and more character customization than you typically see in old school materials. So it still has those three main classes. You got your fighter, uh, your magic user, and your thief. But there are foci, which are like feats that you can use to customize them, as well as a whole bunch of different backgrounds that also tweak your character in different ways. If you are a magic user, there's a bunch of different spell schools as well that are going to alter a little bit how your magic user works. The basic system is still D20 based for combat, but it does use 2D6 for your skills. So this is interesting in that it makes combat still fairly swingy, but it makes skills more reliable which is an interesting little twist. It harkens a little bit back to games like Traveler that are more skill-based, and it makes those more reliable and you feel more competent than you might in 5th edition where your skills can go all over the place. However, probably the biggest selling point for Worlds Without Number, and this isn't really contested by anyone, is that its Game Master tools are absolutely world-class. They are probably the best that I've seen out there when it comes to creating an open sandbox world for players to explore. An open sandbox world that is just filled with an adventure is kind of the pinnacle of role playing. It's what everyone dreams of for the most part, but it's often perceived as being very difficult to make in practice. And Worlds Without Number solves that problem by giving you an enormous amount of material and advice on how to do that in a very concrete way. However, you don't really have to take my advice for this because this book is free. At least most of the book is free. There's a PDF version of it that contains the vast majority of the text, and you can go get it right now. If you want to get the full paid version, then you're going to get a bunch of bonus material. But really, to test out the game and get a feel for it, all you need is the free version. So if nothing else, go check that out because those tools are going to help you no matter what system you end up settling on. All right, our next big recommendation for people leaving 5e and who want to check out the OSR is going to be Dungeon Crawl Classics. And what really sets this book apart is its crazy gonzo and random nature, which has some pluses and some minuses. Before we get into that, though, a quick shout out to today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, an online learning community with thousands of online classes for anyone who wants to learn new skills or explore career options. It's the start of a new year and the perfect time to reinvent your goals, whether those are large or small. One of my goals this year is to improve my time management and productivity. So I've been checking out a class called Productivity for Creators, Systems, Organization, and Workflow by Ali Abdal. I'm only a few lessons in and I've already learned a bunch of excellent tips for making better use of my time. The whole platform is completely ad-free, and the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare that will let you check out their classes and dive in right away. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring, and now let's get back to the show. All right, what is it that makes Dungeon Crawl Classics so wild? And the biggest thing about this is that it loves the dice. So when D&D first came out, a lot of people were confused by the strange multi-sided dice that were required. Dungeon Crawl Classics takes that to 11 by saying, no, you need even more weird dice. You want D5s and D7s and D13s and things like that. It's a game that is almost impossible to railroad just because of the crazy events that the system itself is constantly throwing at you. Uh, one of the most famous examples is that the spell list for wizards, there is a solid page of text for each spell. And that's just not a really long spell description. It's a bunch of spell descriptions. Because when you cast a spell, you have to roll one of these 
big dice to see what is actually going to happen. For example, if you cast a sleep spell, it might just put one guy to sleep, but if you roll high enough, it could put an entire kingdom to sleep, like in Sleeping Beauty. The other classes are also turned up to 11 in other ways as well. For example, the fighter has a mechanic where almost every time they attack, they can attempt to do these feats of strength if you roll a certain number on your die. So your fighter's not going to just be hitting people more often. They're going to be running around the battlefield, cutting off people's heads, knocking them off cliffs, doing backflips, and things like that. And if you're, a, say, a cleric, your god is actually going to be communicating with you and making demands on you and possibly punishing you if you don't do what they say. Now, my third example is if you want to go very straightforwardly classic, and that is Old School Essentials. Old School Essentials is a recapitulation or it is a restating of the basic and expert rules from early D&D around the same time as when Advanced first came out. These rules are very simple, they're light, they're straightforward, but they're quite comprehensive and they cover pretty much any situation in D&D that you might want. It's very focused on dungeon crawling with mechanics that actually make it more fun and more tactical to move through a dungeon, managing your resources and trying to get as much treasure as possible in order to level up. It often comes as a surprise to people when they first encounter these early D&D rules to find out that it's not just a worse version of 5e, it's effectively a different kind of game with totally different priorities and the rules to actually make those things happen. There's a bunch of different flavors, I suppose, of old school essentials, but basically what you need to know is that there is either basic fantasy or advanced fantasy. Uh, you want the advanced fantasy series of books if you want a bit more of AD&D flavor in there, a lot of extra classes and uh, items and things like that added on to expand uh, what's possible in the game. But a lot of people go with just classic fantasy because that is the bare bones stripped down version that a lot of people grew up with. Now, if all of these books I've shown so far are still too rules dense for you and you want something really light and stripped down, maybe you're just tired of all the rules in 5th edition, you probably want Into the Odd. Uh, this is the most recent edition of it and it is an absolutely beautifully designed book. Great cover art, great uh, construction, it looks really pretty, and the rules have been very time tested. There's a lot of different games out there that use Into the Odd as its base. Making a character in Into the Odd it takes less than two minutes. I'm not joking. It's very quick. And one of the most famous features of it is that there is no two hit rolls. So whenever you get into combat, when you attack someone, you just roll how much damage you do. If you have some armor, maybe it reduces the damage by one or two. But as soon as combat is engaged, both sides just start slapping damage on each other back and forth real quick. That means that combat is driven towards its conclusion really quickly and it doesn't drag out. The rules themselves could probably fit on one page. I think they're on four or five pages in this book just because there's a lot of pretty art. Uh, most of the book is a adventure, a whole mega dungeon, a multi-level dungeon, plus a hex crawl that you can go through. There's a big uh, list of random tables that you can use to generate locations in Bastion, which is the main city kind of hub of this particular universe. And there's just lots of really great advice on how to run games as well as some fantastic magical artifacts and traps and things like that that you can use to spice up the game and allow for more player creativity. It's really amazing how much is packed inside this little book. And I think it's a great recommendation if people want to see what can happen to D&D when it's really boiled down to something fast and hard and full of flavor. Now, because this is my channel, I am not going to pass up the opportunity to plug my own stuff, and that is Maze Rats and Knave. These booklets are both best-selling. They're some of the best-selling rule sets on drive through RPG, and they're only a couple bucks, and I think they fill two niches really, really well. Uh, Maze Rats is really great if you want something a little bit more crazy, a little bit more like Dungeon Crawl Classics, and there's a lot of randomization. It randomizes your spells, so you have a random spell every time. They're even randomly generated, so you don't know what they're going to do. It has lots of random tables for you to uh, create the world, a lot of game mastering tools, a little bit like we see in Worlds Without Number, but it's all packed into a very short, very cheap little booklet that you can easily print yourself. Now, Nave, my other book, is more for if you want to do traditional D&D, stuff that's compatible with old school D&D and even modern D&D to a certain extent, but you want it boiled down to just like seven pages and you want really fast character creation and you want more game master fiat in terms of making up how things go on the fly. Anyway, those are all of my recommendations of things to check out if you are fleeing from 5e and you want to dip your toe into the OSR a little bit. There's plenty of other systems out there. I've done lots and lots of reviews on these in the past, but these should be a good starting point to cover most of the bases that I think players are looking for. Remember to leave a comment down below if you think that there is a good system for beginners that I forgot. And if you want to help support the channel, remember to subscribe. And you can even back us over on Patreon where I am working on the second edition of Nave. Thanks for watching, everyone. 
I'll see you next time.